Hi, it's Brian here from Nisha Advice. Hope you're well. We're going to talk about the interest rate changes. We're going to talk about the lending criteria changes. We're going to talk about how lenders are coping with the epidemic. We're going to co talk about the processes that have changed. We're going to talk about future predictions by me about what's going to happen. Um, so let's get down to it. Um, we've seen the interest rate change. Okay, so it's dropped. Instantly, I started receiving calls and emails from existing clients saying, how does this affect me? Or people that are looking to buy a property, how does that affect them? Should I hold off um, because rates have changed? Are lenders following suit with lower, better rates? What do I do? So let's talk about uh, what's happened. Uh, and I will just talk about what's happened, not the PR stuff that you receive from, from lenders and uh, on the BBC. What's actually happened is the people with tracker rates and stand available rates, you've done very well. You're the winners because your rates get affected and there'll be, you know, they'll, they'll come down in accordance with the changes. People on the fixed rate mortgages, nothing happens. And that's including me. Nothing really happens. We're on a fixed rate. So that's it really. Um, people that are looking to buy. So the question that I get is, should I buy now? Shall I look to put my application in now? Or what do I do? And I said, well, actually, I haven't seen any changes with fixed rates. In fact, I've seen them go up a little bit. That's because the lenders, they, they instantly, first of all, pull their tracker rates. So they're not offering the tracker products, a lot of them. And on regards to the fixed rate, I haven't seen them drop their fixed rate. In fact, I've seen some of them push their fixed rates up. So what that means is they're looking to make their margin. They are uncertain about the future, just like everybody else. And they're looking to make their margins. They haven't passed on that rate. They're not coming out with very keen rates. They're not, you're not going to see huge, really, really low rates. They're, they're probably, they've worked out that this is probably the best they can do. And they're remaining at what they are. Now, that could change. So my advice is if we're going for the process, and I don't think we're going to be doing too many applications in the next couple of weeks. But after that, if we're going through an application process, what I suggest we do is obviously we'll discuss this with yourselves is, we go in with the application at the rate that there is, and we just monitor the lender. Because right now the lenders are not um, coming up with better rates, but maybe in two months time or three months time, there may be. Now, as your mortgage offer is valid for six months, you may not be completing uh, until then. So if there is a better rate from the lender, and each lender's got its own process, we may be able to switch you to that better rate. So get yourself in there, get your mortgage offered, so you know you've got a mortgage, and then if it's a better rate out there with the existing lender, we'll swap you. Now, some lenders may charge us 100, 200 pounds admin fee for that. Other lenders may not charge us at all. And some lenders may not allow us to do so. So it's really important we have that discussion. And, and when I'm recommending a lender to you and we think that rates may come down, there is that flexibility there. So that's my advice around that side in regards to the process. So don't hold, up, hold things off, off um, put in the application, and then we can change things. However, let's talk about what's happened with the market. We've had, we've had news from uh, probably one of the UK's biggest lenders today, Halifax, that they are going to limit all new lending to 60% loan to value. Okay, so anything below 60% loan to value, they will accept anything over, they will not do it. They've stopped, they've stopped it. Now, if, rest assured, if Halifax are doing that, others are going to follow suit. Okay, so why has that happened? It's happened because a few days ago, after the government announcement, surveyors stopped going to the houses to survey the properties. So valuers were not valuing the properties anymore. Okay, so what's happened is the lenders physically, even if they wanted to lend you the money, they don't have the surveyors going there and visiting properties. So why are they doing 60% loan to value? Um, it's because of the process. Generally, with some of the companies, some of the banks out there, if the property has got a lot of equity in it, so 60%, 50% loan to value, what they can do is a desktop valuation. So instead of physically sending a valuer there, they'll just do an automated valuation on the computer. Because there's less risk, they, they've got a model to do that. That's why Halifax is not shutting shop. What they're doing is they're saying, right, we can't do the valuation business. We can't do the high loan to value stuff. We'll just do this and we'll just do it automated. So what that means is if you've got a low loan to value mortgage, it's going to probably sail through, okay? But if you've got a high loan-to-value mortgage, they will not accept it. And I I think pretty much all the lenders will probably go follow suit on that process, okay? It's had a dramatic effect. As predicted on my last video, you can go and I'll put the link up there about coronavirus and, and how what's going to happen to it. As predicted, 
a lot of the specialist lenders, they've either pulled their entire ranges, so they're no longer lending, or have limited their loan to values, okay? I still don't know how they're gonna get around the valuation process. Um, I think they're probably going to, they've, they've either have got a rule, but a lot of the specialist lenders, you see, they're dealing with clients and it's all to do with the property. Um, I don't think they will follow suit. I think they'll just pull their product range. I don't think they can come out and say, we'll only lend that 60% loan to value. Not many of them, okay? So I think those lenders will probably pull out of the market. Now, this is the bigger question. Are they gonna come back? Because the they've all, as specialist lenders, they don't, they work differently from banks. Banks have got access to government money, cheap funds, balance sheets, deposits from savers. Specialist lenders that securitize, they get their funds from the money markets and funds just generally. Well, what's happening with the stock market at the moment and all the funds? There's fundamental problems there. So, and the costs may have been going up. So they may be lending the money at 3%, but it's costing them 5%. So it doesn't really make sense for them to lend that money anymore. Also, you've got the, you've got the actual processing problems. Not helping is the government scheme in terms of giving people payment breaks. So what's happening, these smaller lenders, these specialist lenders that have set up for buy to let, for self-employed, for adversity type of um, lending, they're getting inundated with, with existing customers wanting breaks. So their call centers, which is not gonna be huge for existing clients, have all of a sudden been you know, inundated with lots of calls wanting payment breaks. So they're getting hit. Their resources are, are, are pulled away, the money markets, as well as the processing, like value is not being around to value new properties, so they can't even get new 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 money in. So I, I think there's gonna be mayhem in that sector for a while. I think you're gonna see a lot more. We've already seen a number of lenders pull their funds. Um, some of them have been specific to maybe buy to let. Others have said, look, we'll just, we're just not gonna lend. Um, so lenders so far that I know about are Vida, uh, together we've seen um, some building societies, so it's not just securitizing lenders, some smaller building societies have pulled uh, either their uh, remortgage business or their buy to let business or, or, or their entire business. So, uh, you know, you've got a lot of lenders uh, pulling away. So that's what's happened to the specialist market as well as the, the, the residents. So I think the mainstream banks, they've got a processing problem because of the valuation situation, the valuers. The specialist sector, they've got fundamental problems around the way they're funded and how they're set up. And then another batch of lenders, so you think, okay, well, fine. I won't go for a remortgage and I'm not gonna go for a, um, a, a purchase a residential mortgage. Let me try to raise some funds, I need some money. Let me go for a secure loan. I've actually tried to do a few secure loans last week for clients of ours that need access to cash quickly uh, on buy to lets and on residentials. Well, the problems are the same problems with the specialist sector. They're actually specialist lenders. So what I've seen is a couple of the big lending community lenders on that, they've pulled their money. Okay, if they're not banks, they've pulled their money or they've pulled their products. So secure loan is going through a bit of a turmoil because again, they're funded differently. So whether they've got a funding problem, a lot of secure loans, if there's enough equity in the deal, they can do desktop valuation. They've been used to this. They've been doing this quite a long time. So a lot of them though have started pulling away now. There are still lenders in the market, but not, not, not that many. And I think they'll start falling away as well. Certainly this is, this is for the next couple of weeks, months, but I think that's, what, that's the way it's gonna go because they're specialist lenders. Fine, so what's happened with the insurance providers, okay? So the insurance providers have been inundated with calls for you know, payment protection insurance, accident, sickness, unemployment. All of a sudden people are thinking, do you know what, it's quite a good idea to get insurance. I've been trying to tell you guys get insurance for years. And most of my clients say, no, thank you. Or we'll come back to you, by I'm no problem. But what's happened now is they've had to close. So they're saying, well, we're not taking on any more clients. Um, what I would say is I've had some really good encouraging um, um, documents from lenders like for life insurance, for example, or critical illness insurance, um, clearing out, you know, putting a process in place around um, how they will accept new clients. They will still accept new clients. So if you're looking for life insurance, that market's still good. Critical illness is still good, okay? And it is worth, you know, speaking to us about it. We do uh, we do all life insurance business, critical illness, um, 
and we don't charge for it. So we give you the advice uh, and you don't get charged. I mean, we've got very competitive rates out there. It's on par with the comparison uh, sites out there and you get advice because we know what we're talking about. So um, uh, that side of things seems to be standing up. All of, all of the payment protection or anything to do with unemployment, all of that, that's all been, that's all been pulled. So uh, a bit of a doom and gloom uh, video this is. Um, and on that topic of doom and gloom, um, everyone's become an expert on coronavirus and what to take and what not to take and what to do and how, how to do it. So I'm going to give you my little prediction out there. I think um, it's actually been downplayed. I think we, you know, we're probably going to be in this for a while. Um, I think, um, yes, uh, lenders, we're going to see a lot more lenders uh, pull away from writing business and uh, logistically or, and as well as uh, financially um, but until this storm um, goes away I think we're going to be here with this with this market that, that we're in uh, and I've described um, I actually believe that the coronavirus um, is actually been downplayed I think there's a lot worse to come we are behind a, a, a lot of our sort of European neighbors out there uh, and they seem to be suffering and I think you know we we've, we've We've left it a little bit too late, and I think we're going to get hit with a storm. So a lot of this is going to have a knock-on effect to the financial market and the lending community and the insurance sector and, and, and all of our businesses and all our livelihoods. Um, so please keep yourself safe. Um, we're still here as a business. We're actually a small business. We're a nimble business. We've got a big client bank, thankfully. So uh, and we're certainly um, uh, getting things ready and working with our clients, existing clients, to give them quotes. And we'll be around when to pick up things and to refinance things when, um, when, when the market does come back. But certainly, I think there's going to be some huge changes within the financial sector and, and in the lending community because of the, the problems that we're going to see uh, for the next couple of months. Uh, and I think it will be a couple of months. Um, thank you so much. Please keep safe. And we are around, so you can drop, drop us an email. Give us a call if you need us. Um, thank you so much. Take care. All the best please do like and subscribe these videos it really does help us get up to the YouTube rankings you can obviously like the video and you can subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications the content of this video does not constitute giving advice it's purely for information purposes all cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying niche advice limited is authorized and regulated by the financial conduct authority